Anastasia Javian, myself, uh, Dr. Ravi Jain, Associate Professor in the Department of Practice of Medicine and Faculty of Medical Science at Jyoti Vidya Peet University, Jaipur. On 25th May 2024, today we are going, we are discussing about uh, the various complications of diabetes mellitus. We are, we are discussing the long-term complication of the diabetes mellitus. In the last uh, session, we have discussed about diabetic uh, retinopathy. We have also discussed about diabetic uh, neuropathy. And today, uh, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about diabetic uh, nephropathy. Nephropathy in the uh, diabetic retinopathy, we have discussed about the various changes in the eyes that were uh, due to the long-standing cases of the diabetes mellitus. Uh, then we have discussed about diabetic neuropathy. Diabetic neuropathy, we have, we have seen the changes uh, in the nerves and that included mononeuropathy, uh, body neuropathy, or neuropathy. Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the uh, various changes in the kidneys that will include the nephropathy. So let us start with the diabetic nephropathy. Diabetic nephropathy, as the name suggests, uh, nephropathy pathy means disease in the nephrons because of the long-standing cases of the diabetes mellitus. So uh, there are a lot of changes when a person is suffering from diabetes mellitus for a very long period of time. There are a lot of changes that are seen in the kidneys, in the glomeruli. Now there is protein leakage into the urine due to the diabetic, uh, due to the damage of the kidneys or the nephrons by the uh, the increased level of glucose in the blood. And so, in the blood containing more of glucose, when it is coming in the glomeruli, in the nephrons, uh, <clears throat> this is producing damage in the kidneys, leading to the development uh, of the human urea, protein, uh, the hematuria, and so on. So, what is diabetic nephropathy? Uh, diabetic nephropathy is the leading cause of chronic kidney disease, uh, that is, end stage renal disease and the chronic kidney disease requiring renal replacement therapy. So diabetic nephropathy, this is uh, the leading cause. Uh, because of the diabetic nephropathy, a lot of people are suffering from kidney disease leading to the end-stage kidney disease and chronic kidney disease. And that is requiring the uh, renal replacement therapy. Kidney replacement is required in such patients. About 30% of the patients with type 1 diabetes have developed diabetic nephropathy in the past 20 years after the diagnosis. So around 30% of the patients with type 1 diabetes have developed diabetic uh, nep uh, nephropathy uh, in 20 years after the diagnosis of the disease. So we can see that uh, type 1 diabetes, that is the non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, uh, the people are developing end stage kidney disease and they are requiring uh, renal transplant. Now, what is the pathophysiology? Uh, the pathophysiology of the uh, this uh, diabetic nephropathy, the first changes coincides with the onset of microalbuminuria. So initial change, first of all, what is seen in, in case of uh, diabetic uh, nephropathy, those people who are suffering from diabetes for a very long period of time, uh, the first change that they are going to see is albuminuria, that is presence of albumin in the urine. There is thickening of the glomerular basement membrane. The basement membrane is thickened and uh, there is accumulation of the matrix material in the mesangium. So what is happening is the first change that is coinciding with the onset of microalbuminuria. This is including thickening of the glomerular basement membrane. Uh, there is accumulation of the matrix material in the mesangium. There is also nodular deposits that are characteristic and glomerular sclerosis, that is thickening and hardening of the glomeruli, that worsens as heavy proteinuria develops until the glomeruli are progressively lost and renal function is deteriorated. So what happens is there is nodular deposits that are characterized by glomerulosclerosis, that is hardening of the uh, glomeruli that worsens uh, as the heavy proteinuria develops. So more and more protein is there. There is thickening and hardening of the glomeruli that develops until the glomeruli are progressively lost and renal function is deteriorated. So what is happening in the pathophysiology? The first change that coincides with the uh, onset of microalbuminuria that includes the thickening of the glomerular basement membrane. There is accumulation of the matrix material in the mesangia, and there are nodular deposits that are characteristic and uh, glomerular sclerosis that is worsens as the heavy proteinuria is developing until 
glomeruli are progressively lost and renal function is deteriorated. So now, what are the risk factors? Risk factors uh, of uh, development of uh, <coughs> diabetic nephropathy. Uh, the risk factors means who are more prone for development of diabetic nephropathy. So the people with poor control of blood glucose level, uh, people having long duration of diabetes mellitus, presence of other microvascular complications, ethnicity, that is Asian races and primary Indians, any pre-existing uh, case of hypertension that includes family history of diabetic nephropathy and family history of hypertension. So what are the risk factors of diabetic uh, <clears throat> nephropathy? Uh, the risk factors for development of diabetic nephropathy includes the poor control of blood glucose level, long-standing cases of diabetes mellitus, the presence of other microvascular complications, ethnicity, example, Asian races and Pima Indians, pre-existing hypertension, family history of diabetic nephropathy, family history of hypertension. Now, what are the clinical features? Uh, the clinical features of diabetic nephropathy includes proteinuria, that is albuminuria. This is the first and the foremost uh, condition that is seen in case of diabetic nephropathy. Progressive hypertension, slowly and steadily, the blood pressure is increasing. Progressive renal insufficiency, the kidneys are going into renal insufficiency slowly and steadily. The progression may vary from microalbuminuria to lipstick positive proteinuria and then progressively over proteinuria and chronic kidney disease. So the clinical features of diabetic nephropathy includes proteinuria with the progressive hypertension, progressive renal insufficiency, progressive may vary from microalbuminuria to dipstick positive proteinuria, and then progressively over proteinuria and chronic kidney disease. The proteinuria can be variable in diabetic nephropathy. That is, with as much as 25 gram in 24 hours in absence of profound renal insufficiency, or alternatively with progressive renal insufficiency and stable modest protein. So the proteinuria, this can be variable in diabetic nephropathy uh, with as much as 25 grams in 24 hours in absence of profound renal insufficiency, or alternatively with progressive renal insufficiency and stable modest proteinuria. And what are the investigations that can be done in case of uh, diabetic nephropathy? The investigations includes microalbuminuria, that is important indicator of the risk of developing over diabetic nephropathy, albuminuria accompanied by hypertension and renal biopsy. So the investigations include microalbuminuria. This is an important indicator of the risk of developing over diabetic nephropathy, albuminuria accompanied by hypertension and renal biopsy. Now, how to manage a case of diabetic nephropathy? In management of diabetic nephropathy, ACE inhibitors are given. ACE inhibitors, they delay the onset of the nephropathy, the end-stage renal disease, angiotensin-2 receptor blockers, hyperkalemia, hypotension, and worsening of GFR can limit single or combined therapy with renal angiotensin aldosterone system inhibitors. So the management consists of ACE inhibitors that delays the onset of nephropathy and of end-stage renal disease, angiotensin-2 receptor blockers, hyperkalemia or hypotension or worsening of the GFR can limit single combined therapy with renin angiotensin aldosterone system inhibitors. Vigorous effort should be made to reduce the risk of progression and uh, of cardiovascular diseases. So, in case of diabetic nephropathy, vigorous effort should be done to reduce the risk of progression of the cardiovascular disease by, number one, improving the control of the blood glucose level. First of all, we have to improve the blood glucose level. Then aggressive reduction of the blood pressure should be done. And aggressive cardiovascular risk factor has to be reduced. So vigorous effort should be made to reduce the risk of the progression of cardiovascular disease by improved uh, control of the blood glucose, aggressive reduction of the blood pressure, Aggressive cardiovascular risk factor reduction. The diabetic control becomes difficult as the renal impairment progresses. So as the renal impairment is progressing, the diabetic uh, control becomes more difficult. And if not done, then renal replacement therapy has to be done. So this was about uh, diabetic nephropathy. Let us once again revise what we have discussed. Diabetic nephropathy is the leading cause of chronic kidney disease. So this is the leading cause of chronic kidney disease. With end-stage renal disease, CKD requiring renal replacement therapy. So 
understood uh, this as we have discussed that it is the leading cause of chronic kidney disease of end stage renal disease of chronic kidney disease requiring renal replacement therapy. About 30% of the patient with type 1 diabetes have developed diabetic nephropathy and 20 years after the diagnosis. The pathophysiology of diabetic nephropathy, the first change coincides with the onset of uh, diabetic nephropathy is the microalbumin urea, that is presence of protein in the urine. And this includes, number one, thickening of glomerular basement membrane. There is thickening of the glomerular basement membrane. There is accumulation of matrix material in the mesangium. So the first change that we are going to see in case of diabetic nephropathy uh, is the presence of the uh, albumin, microalbuminuria, that is uh, small proteins in the urine. And this includes thickening of the glomerular basement membrane and accumulation of matrix material in the mesangium. There is also nodular deposits that are characteristics and glomerular sclerosis. So there is presence of glomerular sclerosis, nodular deposits. These are characteristics and uh, glomerular sclerosis worsens and heavy protein urea develops until the glomeruli are progressively lost and renal function is deteriorated. So nodular deposits are characteristics, glomerular sclerosis worsening as heavy protein urea is developing until glomeruli are progressively lost and renal function is deteriorating. Now, what are the risk factors of development of diabetic uh, nephropathy? The risk factors includes the poor control of blood glucose, the long duration of diabetes, uh, presence of other microvascular complications, ethnicity, pre-existing hypertension, family history of diabetic nephropathy, family history of hypertension. So the risk factors, which includes poor control of blood glucose, long duration of diabetes, presence of other microvascular complications, ethnicity, pre-existing hypertension, family history of diabetic nephropathy, and family history of hypertension. What are the clinical features of diabetic nephropathy? The clinical features of diabetic nephropathy include uh, the sign and symptoms from which the person is suffering because of diabetic uh, nephropathy. Uh, this includes proteinuria, the presence of protein in the urine, progressive hypertension, increased in the blood pressure, Progressive renal insufficiency. As the disease is progressing, there is uh, kidney uh, function is uh, getting deteriorated. And progression may vary from microalbuminuria. That is initially, there is uh, small proteins, microalbuminuria, that is 30 to 300 mg in 24 hours, to dipstick positive proteinuria, that is more than 300 mg albuminuria, then progressively over proteinuria and chronic kidney disease. So the clinical features include proteinuria, progressive hypertension, progressive renal insufficiency, Progression may vary from microalbuminuria to dipstick positive proteinuria and then positively over proteinuria and chronic kidney disease. The proteinuria can be variable in diabetic nephropathy in as much as 25 grams to over 24 hours in absence of found renal insufficiency or alternatively with progressive renal insufficiency and stable modest proteinuria. Now, what are the investigations that can be done in case of diabetic nephropathy? Microalbuminuria is an important indicator for the risk of development of over diabetic nephropathy. Albuminuria accompanied by hypertension and renal biopsy. So investigation includes uh, albuminuria accompanied by hypertension and renal biopsy. Now how to manage a case of diabetic uh, nephropathy? Whenever a case of diabetic nephropathy is coming to us, uh, there are a lot of things that are needed to be done. But uh, first of all, we have control the blood sugar level so that uh, this is not uh, progressed. ACE inhibitors uh, are given to delay the onset of nephropathy and uh, the end stage renal disease. Angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are to be given. Hyperkalemia or hypotension and uh, worsening of GFR can limit the single or combined therapy with renin angiotensin aldosterone system inhibitors. So ACE inhibitors, they delay the onset of nephropathy in end-stage renal disease. Angiotensin 2 receptor blockers can be given. Hyperkalemia, hypotension, and worsening of GFR can limit. The single and combined therapy with renin angiotensin and aldosterone system inhibitors. Vigorous effort should be made to reduce the risk of progression and of the cardiovascular disease by improving the control of the blood glucose. Aggressive reduction of blood pressure and aggressive cardiovascular risk factor reduction. Diabetic control becomes difficult as the renal impairment is progressing and at the end, renal replacement therapy is done if uh, the kidney deterioration has taken place. So this was all for today. Uh, we have discussed about diabetic nephropathy. I hope you must have understood this diabetic nephropathy completely. So in this session, we have discussed about the late uh, complications of diabetes, which includes diabetic retinopathy. We have also discussed about diabetic neuropathy and at the end, diabetic nephropathy. 
So in this way, we have completed the late complication with diabetes mellitus that is responsible for a lot of morbidity and mortality. So this was all for today. Uh, thank you very much.